We are so excited that you're all here and present with us today. Uh, today is an, uh, an absolute amazing celebration of innovation, cultural stories, and just the exceptions and pinnacle of the Indian arts world, the Native American Indian arts world, or in indigenous. Um, so I'm Jamie Schultz, the executive director of Santa Fe Indian Market, also celebrating the Hello, my name is Sarah Aragon. I come to you from Indian Wells, Arizona. My art, my piece that I draw is called Back in the Saddle. The reason why it's called Back in the Saddle is because I took time off back in 2019, and this is the first year that I'm able to do something like this again, so therefore I call it Back in the Saddle. My inspiration to make this is our horse, Kawil. We've had him ever since he was a baby. And for my family, and for the Navajo people, and I'm sure there's other tribes too, we have had horses in our family ever since I can remember when I was a little girl. My late grandpa, he used to do horses. He loved horses. So we've had horses in our family for, from, you know, from the past to the present and will be to the future. We use horses in our lives a lot. They're a huge deal for us as Navajo people. But first and foremost, I want to thank the Creator for allowing me to create this wonderful piece in honor of our horses, in honor of my grandparents. Mother Nature has also been an inspiration to me. The beauty that surrounds us, all that we're lucky to see and enjoy. As I said, Kawil has been our inspiration. He's been in our family since he was a baby. Our in the Navajo, we have ceremonies where we utilize horses still. We have uh, stories and songs and prayers that go with these horses. We are told the horses made of rain, the thunder, the lightning, the water, the raindrops itself. So this is a female Navajo head stall of a female pit rain, uh, right, uh, no piece. The little dangle parts represent the rain. The top part represents the sun. Right underneath is our plantation, our growth. 
The consoles on the side represent the moon. There's so much work that went into this. I did um, truth by casting ingots, I did milling, I did chiseling and chasing, fabrication. There's a lot of heat involved, hot heat. Some of the parts in the back are tiny, so you have to make sure that you didn't uh, get the other metals too hot to get those small pieces in. There's stone inlay. It was very interesting to do this, and this has been my whole life in the making. Um, some of the turquoise I've been collecting throughout the years. It's just been a wonderful thing to do. It took me, like I said, my whole life to get to this point, and it felt so right to do it. It felt so right at the time. Now to bring it out and share with the world. I want to thank Celaya for hosting this market, Indian market, for us indigenous people. I want to thank the judges who selected my headstone to win. I want to thank everyone who is going to enjoy its beauty because it is a beautiful piece. It means a lot to me and my family. It means a lot to the people who own horses, who still have horses in their lives. Because we go way back with horses as Navajo people. And some of the turquoise in there is, like I said, it represents growth. That's my inspiration, and those are my techniques. And like I said, I want to say thank you to Swaya and all the judges. And also to my husband and my son for putting up with me and helping me, for being my support and my motivation. And to our son, Lance, he's been a huge inspiration to me because he's taken up this art form of silversmithing. And I hope that one day he will be able to stand up here too with the headstone he's created. I'm trying not to get emotional, but it hits, it hits me in the feelers. <laughs> I just want to say thank you to my family, to our home, to our horse of will, and everybody that is here that made the safe journey here to the other uh, winners here. I can't wait to see everybody's work. You know, we're so lucky and fortunate to be able to see everybody's artwork. Because when you're working with something in the raw, you have it in your mind what it's going to look like. Throughout the time that you're working with it, this raw stuff, the, the um, supplies that you're using, by the time you're finished with it, it is emotional that you're finally able to see what you've created in your mind now in your hands. So I want to congratulate all the winners here. Yeah. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you very much, Sarah. So we're going on to our next classification, which is pottery. And we would like to bring up Garrett Maho. Good morning, everybody. How are you all today? Excited? Everybody's excited here today. I'd just like to introduce myself. I'm a Hopi traditional potter, Garrett Maho. Um, been doing pottery since grade school. My mentors are my the latest Marilyn Bali and the latest Jacob Poopy was my mentor throughout the years of pottery. Um, it's a very, very emotional day for everyone. Um, but like I said, you know, everybody's came a long way. You know, a lot of this didn't happen overnight. Many years and many years of experience in our art world today, especially for me, learning as a traditional person. This is something that I wanted to learn as being Hopi. This is something that I wasn't forced to learn. This is something that I wanted to learn. This is carried on from generation and generation in my family. And I'm honored to be here today to share 
a little bit of myself. I know we're not time in here, but I'll try to hurry a little bit. We're always in a hope, but we're always in a hurry. I so many people are always in a hurry to go somewhere. <laughs> um, my, the title of my pot is called Gentle Rain. Um, it's, it's because the rain that comes, you know, to water our crops, it's, 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 it's just, I mean, there's so much work into the piece that I've done. And like I said, I did title it Gentle Rain, meaning the clouds that are coming in. The rain that was coming down as I sat in my studio window looking out. I have a little friend that used to come and visit me every morning, but it, it was a squirrel. <laughs> <laughs> and the other day it rained and it sat on the window while the rain came down. And as I, as I heard the rain, I could hear the Kachinas spirits coming. And I know that one of those spirits was my latest friend, Jacob Kupi. I'm pretty sure that some of you guys are familiar with that name. Um, he's a well-known artist, but this piece is dedicated to him and to the rest of my, of my people, Gopi people. This award that I won is just not for me. It's for my people. I bring this home award for my people. This comes from here and it's going back home to share with everyone. My inspiration was Jake. Every day I worked with him. He told me, Garrett, it's your turn. You carry this on. Eventually you'll get there. You work hard, you'll get it. And this is where I'm at today, standing on the stage talking to each and every one of you guys. My materials are all from the earth. Traditional clay that's picked naturally. Oh my God, my arms are so sore from everything. <laughs> you know, chopping manure, I almost chopped my finger off, chopping manure, getting ready for my firing with a hatchet. You know, and it's like, whoops. <laughs> and my mom goes, what happened now? You know, I have a band-aid here, and I'm here holding this, trying to work with my firing, and blood and everything is running down to me. <laughs> And then I burn myself, <laughs> you know. Well, I guess that's just part of what I do. You know, I think each, each and every potter has gone through this. But, you know, that's, that's, that, those are fun times. <laughs> getting burned and losing your finger, right? And then getting the award. <laughs> and then getting the award after all of that. <laughs> many, but many, many, many years. Many, many years I've, I've, I've been doing this. You know, I probably started with, like I said, grade school, six years old. Now I'm not like 48, I believe, I think. <laughs> but anyway, my techniques are hand-built, traditional clay. I still do the traditional painting with the yucca brush. In fact, I got blisters from my yucca brush, um, holding it. You should see my paintbrush poor thing, it's barely hanging on, but I still use it. I tie the string to it, you know, so it holds up. But everything in the pot is done traditionally. The painting, the pigments, the different types of clays that I use for colors, the BB that is used to paint. We don't go walk into Michael's and say, hey, you got any paint to paint pottery? No, that's not us, you know. We're all traditional here. But, um, and the length of time I worked on this, I started right after the herd show in this piece. So it's almost a year since I tried to get this piece done. And it's a lot of work, you know, and a lot of memory in it. Uh, but I'd like to thank each and every one of you guys for being here today to help us celebrate this. It's a big honor, especially for my family, my supporters. My mother and my father here are still here with me today. And to my best friend, it's up there. The latest Jacob Koopy is up there. I know you're watching over me. And he knows it. Go for it, Garrett. You did it. Thank you. Bye bye.
much to our third classification, which is 2D painting, drawing, um, and we'd like to invite Jonathan <clears throat> Johnson Gaziak, please. Ms. Jonathan, good morning. Uh, everybody here. My name is uh, Johnson Yazzie. Originally from uh, uh, Pin Hill, uh, Arizona. Uh, I, uh, um, I'm glad to be here today um, and to be part of the event. And um, I was looking forward to to the stay, and, um, and, and uh, it's here. So. We're, we're all excited about the event, and what I want to mention is I have a piece here. Uh, this is a piece about uh, a Navajo uh, individual uh, helper uh, sometimes. So uh, when you go back in history, uh, particularly by, uh, there is a time when uh, we had uh, helpers, and those uh, individuals were looking for work. Uh, they wanted to do uh, support. They were supportive. They were supportive of uh, any family, you know, for a cup of coffee, for, for breakfast, fried bread, mutton stew. So then, and that's how we helped each other. Uh, back in the day, in the, in the 1970s, I remember, because it, it, I was about like maybe eight years old when I was about the uh, uh, the height of the Vietnam War. I was like maybe eight years old or nine years old. So, but I was I wasn't in school at that, at that time. So I, I learned uh, late, later. I, I started out uh, in the beginning level uh, when I was nine or ten years old. But uh, I knew how to. Uh, uh, I had an idea about uh, like uh, look at things from three D perspective. So uh, I could figure out uh, how what's in front of me in the middle ground. What have you, like uh, the backdrop, you could see, I could envision the sky, that kind of thing. So, and I knew back then people were, they were doing their uh, mistake figures, but me, I kind of knew what was going on, you know, in, the, in, in, in that perspective, uh, in, in our perspective. And then, uh, but that's what this is about is that I made, uh, there is that I work with designs, I was uh, educated as, as a young. Commercial arts, but and then again, I'm um, gradually moving into fine arts. So you can see there is a box. If you look at that painting uh, below his feet to where the dog is at, and behind him, there is a couple of sheep, and to his right, there's another sheep there. And it goes, the line goes back down, so there is a triangle and, and horizontally situated. Now, if you look at from, from his uh, uh, from, from his feet, where the dog is at, to the top of his head, and out back down to uh, the right of his, uh, uh, the left of his body. Now there's the triangle. So there's forms and shape that I had put together. So this doesn't only exist where, where, uh, uh, where, where, uh, where there is uh, school, where, well, did they teach you techniques? This is what it is, it's technique. And how to construct a composition, which is really important to me. But it also it is important that, that, that we, we hear stories about uh, grandmother uh, spider. It was always there, you know, it was always in our genes. Design and composition is in our DNA, you know, native people that know, we, we know about how to design things. And, 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 at the same time, we know our subject, okay? So we are the subject to the native, non-native people, but we know more about what, what, what we paint, what we scout, what we we basket. So that's all about our, our, uh, our history. So that is what you need about Indian art. That's what you need about. We're so advanced in a way that, that it comes with uh, the history about our, you know, like we have, we have stories, okay, 
So when we talk about stores, we're deep. You know, we don't do research. It's part of our life. You know, so, so this is art. This is what we call art. So, so, so what do you mean by art? That's what I'm talking about. So this is what art means to us. As a Navajo, as, as well as any other tribe yeah, of, of the district country today. So, so as far as the, the design of the subject, that's what this is. So uh, I appreciate um, all of you being here today. I enjoy having you. I was looking at beautiful faces this morning. So, and then we can have a conversation again later in the day. I think I missed something here that I wanted to talk about. Give me, give me a second here. The, 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 the how long did it, did it take me? Uh, you know, this piece uh, sorted out back in 20, uh, 20, I think it was 21 or 22, yeah, 21. And I, I added uh, a few other things as it started to uh, develop. And finally came across that uh, it, was, it was done. But then again, a few other colors you have to add to it and make it more, more beautiful. You know, it, it brings out more of the, the quality. So I think that's what uh, I'm going to uh, 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 leave it at that. And, uh, uh, and then again, appreciate it listening to me. And we can talk a little more uh, sometime today. So I'm uh, looking forward uh, to, to seeing you tomorrow out there as well. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Yazi. So we're now moving on to wooden, wooden pueblo carvings, and we are going to invite up to the stage Arthur Holmes. Good morning. My name is Arthur Holmes. Um, I come from um, the lower village. There's you know, as natives, sometimes we just don't put our words onto paper. It's from here, from our hearts. And our pieces are visualized and flow through our spirits to our artwork. And this piece I have is a chasing star. And you know, out home, we haven't had rain for so long. And I'm, I grew up waking up early in the morning, sit outside the house and drink my little coffee and glaze out there trying to bring in the rain clouds for our crops. And all I see was stars going by. And maybe it was telling me something. In this world we live today, we tend to come apart. So maybe he's grasping all of us as one. But, but then, you know, we, as I'm a farmer, I've been struggling with our crops. And we haven't had rain. I think this would be the last, first time we haven't had a drought in Hopi. You see the corn falling down, you know, and to us, those are our children. You know, you don't want to give up on your children and you want to bring them up, make them strong. But that kind of inspired me, you know, I have wood inside my shop and you know it just, I just grabbed it and it just took a toll on it formed itself so I have them like kind of grazing above the base where the asteroid is so I kind of make it kind of like a realistic figure but I like to congratulate the winners here all the artists 
and and thank you very much. So our next uh, category, I'd like to invite up to the stage, Ryan Benelli. Good morning, uh, good afternoon. I just, uh, my name is Ryan Benelli and uh, I'm a sculptor. Um, uh, it's, a, it's a great privilege and an honor to be here three years in a row and uh, um, putting in the hard work, the time. Um, nobody else would, could, could do what I'm doing without, with a lot of help from my, from my family and my friends and uh, collectors, um, keeping the ball rolling. Um, the title is uh, Feathered Prayers, and it's out of Italian marble. And uh, the work took just about a year to complete. It's, um, I, I work with hammer and chisel, hand tools, with electric tools using diamonds. It's, uh, I've always said this, diamonds is not only a woman's best friend and a gift, but it's the sculptor's best friend also. So uh, diamonds in every part of the, the project was used. Um, the, the stainless steel base I put together, I fabricated that, and we have um, etching design CNC cut that have feathers, stars, lightning bolts, and arrowheads. Uh, there's black granite on there and then um, the sculpture it it can wheel anywhere where it's needed to be but then it also turns on a custom-made pin that we uh, source locally and um, there's like 10 people that was involved in this whole project and it's so that's the reason why it wasn't only just me it was a whole team of helpers and family members and friends and um, other than that, it's just, I'm thankful to be here and um, not just for ourselves, but for all the artists here to have a great show. And let's have good things and let's have fun. Thank yes. you. Congratulations. Thank you. Thank you very much, Ryan. So I'd like to invite up for the classification for textiles. Isabel Gomez. Oh, Gonzalez, sorry. <laughs> Isabel? Isabel has been in the market for 50 years and she's so excited to be here. Borders 
the raindrops, the borders, in the middle, they represent to have a good life. The diamonds inside represent the water jug. And all this, what I do, is done without a pattern. Before I start my work, I go out to the east. I throw, I'm a, a very traditional person. I go out and we pray with our cornmeal. And I ask the creator, my mom, my dad, up there to give me what I'm going to put on my mantle. So sometimes I have the material. I look at it, and then sometimes I see the design right away, and I go from there. Sometimes I'll make a few changes as I'm going, but I don't have no drawings or nothing that I go by. It's all that comes from my head. And thanks to my mom and all my relatives and famous that inspired me to keep on doing what I'm doing. Because each generation that the little ones come, you know, they need dance kills, <clears throat> dance garments, to take part in our traditional uh, dances. Um, and then my, uh, <clears throat> the mantas, some of my mantas, they're, <clears throat> they're worn during the winter, the deer dances. And then some, they wore them as a wedding outfit. And I also do shirts that people wear when they're drumming for different dances. So I do a lot of other stuff pertaining to traditional um, doings. But um, it's a very time consuming work. I'm doing a month for maybe a month and a half, doing it every day. In the morning, like people go to work, and I sit down at eight in the morning, and that's when I start. Sometimes my kids are already in bed, and I'm not still sitting up trying to do it. So uh, it's, I guess, my job to get, keep on doing, because people, when I see them places, you know, right away they say, oh, Isabel, I need this. And I always tell them, I, so I'm not a machine. <laughs> 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 I do it as I, I, if I can, you know, or sometimes I do some that people order, and then I have to sit down and do it for whatever they need. You know, maybe they need it for so there's some ceremonial thing or whatever, you know, then I have to sit down and do it. So, but uh, I thank my kids, the four of them right there, Myra, Mello, Ryan, and Lily. And I have 11 grandkids, seven great, but they're the ones that keep me, support me on doing what I'm doing. And I, I uh, tell them to keep the tradition, to keep the kids inspired by taking part in their dances because it's so vital to us. And I talk to my kids in my native language. And uh, I try to talk, since I live at Tewa, at San Juan, so I try to speak a little bit of Tewa myself. So, but um, I want to thank all of you for being here, and it's an honor for me to, to get uh, my Manta Awards.
I'm thankful for everything. So, uh, my mom. Thank you very much. Thank you very much, Isabel. That was very moving, and we really appreciate uh, your story, as well as all the other artists. We can just see how much of the artist goes into these pieces, and it's absolutely profound. So thank you for sharing that. I'd like to invite up for the diverse arts classification, Mr. Dan Ballow, please. Quetzi, hello. Thank you for everybody being here. My name is Dan Ballow. I'm from the Pueblo of Acoma. I'm a diverse art artist. I work with wood, I work with rock. Anything that comes from Mother Nature I work with. The piece I have is, is a uh, ensemble, and I call it the Pueblo Revolt. And I was kind of inspired by this with all the different stories um, that I heard about Pueblo Revolt. The inspiration was 344 years in the making. It, um, the, the whole story of the revolt kind of brings back um, all the feelings to all the indigenous people here uh, just past August 10th is when the anniversary was. And um, a couple years ago, I had this idea about the knotted cord. The knotted cord was Pope's um, signal to all the different pueblos down the Rio Grande that when all the knots were untied is the day that the revolt would happen. So we sent runners, two runners down the Rio Grande, all these different pueblos and all the different leaders were instructed that once the knots were all untied, that would be the day of the revolt when they would all form an attack, a unison attack, so nobody would be warned. So the, the basis of this piece is the, the knife, the dagger that's on the quiver. There's some yucca knotted cord in, embedded in clear epoxy, and that's the handle. So that's the representation of the knotted cord. The obsidian blade is, uh, I'm a flint napper by heart, so I created this dagger blade. Um, one, of the, one of the artists out here, uh, Jason from Santa Clara, he does some, pot, some tiles, some kind of uh, comic book tiles. And a lot of them have this dagger that he's showing um, when they're attacking the, the village. So that's where the inspiration of the dagger came in. Um, I'm a big hunter, so I use, I make and use bows myself. This particular bow that I, I made is um, from an elk rub that I found in the woods a few years ago that had been rubbed dry, and I seen the red part in the bottom of it. So when you look at it closely, you can see the back of it. The bow has got the red cedar. The front part of it has got over 150 turkey feathers laid end to end on the front of the bow, so it acts as camouflage. It also has um, a spiritual meaning. We use the fallen turkey feathers in our prayers so that, that all those turkey feathers are uh, kind of with all of us praying that this revolt was going to happen properly. Um, I also do tan and tan on hides. Uh, cow hides, rabbit hides are all involved in that. Um, I use our real sinew to make the arrow fletchings. The fletchings came from turkeys that I've harvested myself. Um, each one of the arrows has got an arrowhead that I've flipped and napped, um, to match the weight. The arrows are a patchy plume that I collected along the river and straightened with heat and stained with, uh, with Indian tea, kota Indian tea, and I broke them with bare fat to keep them waterproof. Um, the quiver is, is some rawhide and the, trick and, the uh, and the rabbit skin is also uh, skin that I've tanned. So the whole piece is kind of what I think a warrior would have grabbed on August 10th to go out and, and do their duties, what they plan on doing. So the whole thing kind of culminates into me as a hunter and me able to, to make the dagger to, to just get this whole setup together. I just, uh, that's kind of my inspiration and the materials that I used 
Um, it's been about two years since I started making it. The, the cowhide is what we butchered in the fall for our doings in November. Um, the turkey feathers were started collecting in April. Uh, way back in September when the bow was first picked. So it's been a, a long culmination. Um, the dagger handle was probably the hardest part because it's about the third try. There's a lot of lemonade that I had to make before I came up with this. <laughs> so I just wanted to thank everybody for being here. Thank you to all the other artists. Um, you, everybody inspires everybody here. And, and we put all of our heart and soul into this. Being a flint napper, I'm constantly bleeding. We're always, <laughs> we're always making stuff. So we put our heart, our soul, our blood into this art. And to be up here, I'm just so honored to be here. Thank you very much. Thank you so much, Dan. I really appreciate that. Uh, right now, I'd like to invite up Andrea Han Hanley as well as Shaila from the Native Arts and Culture Foundation. They have sponsored the uh, Best of Classification for People of Pilbrick, and we'd like to go ahead and introduce that. Good morning. <laughs> um, it's, it, it's our honor in the Native Arts and Cultures Foundation to um, give the award to Monica Raphael. Generally, known 
to be horse people. But our relatives from the horse nation came to assist us during the 18th century smallpox pandemic, where nearly half of the Anishinaabe nation passed. These horses became family, and we adorned them as we adorned our human relatives. The Anishinaabe developed their own style that was inspired by our Cree cousins. In my research for Ndege Odewi, my dad's horse, I found interesting detail in surviving examples of Anishinaabe horse regalia. The gear was uh, made and uh, used as stabilizer from birch bark to form the horse stalls, as well as porcupine quills were wrapped around the horse hair. The, the Anishinaabe women became expert artisans in the construction of elaborate padded saddles. And this one is a miniature version inspired by a saddle attributed to the Potawatomi that is in the care of the Adajor Museum of American Indian and Western Art in Indianapolis, where I probably hold a day job as home curator of Great Lakes Native Art and Cultures and Community Engagement. This past June, as an employee, I experienced the vast amount of time and energy, as well as financial resources that it takes to produce an Indian market. As an artist, I offer, I want to say, I want to say kitchen neglect to Jamie and Mona. And the entire staff at Smile, the board of directors, the countless volunteers, and all of the hours it takes, as well as all the donors at Smile. Your hard work and contribution make it possible to help us keep our culture alive. To be able to share our narratives of our past for our young children and Keep it for our grandchildren's grandchildren. Culture and native art is a continuum. It is living and needs to be honored and cared for. By doing so, we continue to honor and care for our ancestors who left us so very much. Miigwech, Miigwech. reminder of why we're here today, to not only um, <clears throat> support these artists that make sure that I and support their livelihoods, but also that they can pass on their stories, our stories, and that they are also the cultural bearers for many, many communities. Thank you again, Monica. <laughs> Award winner, Adrian Day. Yeah! Ho, ho, Hanaj. 
Kanchi, Kadege Mina, um, Ho Chunk Raja, Kuruga, Buju, Asana, the Yeezy, Kandis, and Kaz, and Koda, Ben, Shakhtan, and Donjba. Hainipi, um, Minogizga, saying good morning to you all, greetings. And firstly, before I start any of my talking, um, I want to thank Sly for even having a, a prestigious um, youth classification. And I've been coming here since I was seven, so half my life I've been, I've been at this show. And um, getting better every year, or trying to better myself every year in my artwork. And um, Native per capita in the Army and all of our servicemen is um, the highest. I wanted to honor all my um, my chokas and my my great grandpa that served for this country and. All my chokas, all my dagas, all my all my gagas that that served, and a lot of men and women had had to give their that that sacrifice for this nation. And um, it's not a lot, but I try to honor try to honor them with this piece that I made, um, Ho Chunk Han um, Monpe, and. Um, it really shouldn't be a thing that I have to worry about, but I need to. And um, it sucks that um, this, this is a thing that goes on in our daily lives as um, natives, that I have to worry about how my culture is gonna stand and go through these generations and I'm going to make sure I do my part to have my culture stay for my great grandkids and when I have kids they're definitely going to be here definitely going to teach them all the all the stuff I know I started this about two years ago, and then um, I got like maybe quarter of the way done, and then I lost it. <laughs> Recently, about like a month ago, I found it just in random bag. <laughs> so um, I was um, for myself. I got high standards for myself, and um, I was trying to make a full outfit, <laughs> but um, stuff was a little bit too small since I started two years ago. <laughs> so um, I just um, started it again. Almost forgot about it. And um, had a had a beat real quick to get it done. I um, in our ways that um, those woodland warriors and all those Ho Chunk warriors, they that's what they wore out to battle. That's what they that's what they used to carry all their medicine and um, all their prayers. Came in there, and that's where that's where my mind went to honor to honor all of them because most of them don't have a voice, and I wanted them to have that voice to so everyone would know so everyone would know that. Our people did that, and um, I've learned all this stuff from my parents and my great grandparents and my my grandma, and they've all raised me right. And, That's um, for sure. 
I couldn't ask for in a life any better. And um, I really love this way of life and I love what I do. I love coming to all these um, art markets and showing my work and um, winning sometimes. <laughs> and um, I don't know, but for me, this is a big accomplishment because um, it's a three-peat. <laughs> and um, yes. I just want to say thank you to you all. Listen to me talk up here, just a young guy that don't don't have as much wisdom as all of you here. All most of you are all probably older than me and probably know way more than me, but. Um, <laughs> I'm trying. Hey. Um, but Thank you, Adrian. That was amazing um, and very, very moving as well. I'd like to invite for our last classification, Fast Retreat. Caleb Hoffman, please come up. Hello. There you go. Okay. Good afternoon. I would like to congratulate all the other artists for achieving this great honor. I'm so grateful and proud to be here. I want to start off today by thanking those who helped guide me to ultimately be up here today and accept this honor. Thank you to my Lord and Savior Jesus Christ, my wife Lauren, for our endless support. I already lost my place. <laughs> <laughs> and encouragement. My mom, Teresa Secourt, who first taught me to make baskets, and my teacher and friend, Jeremy Ferrer. And thank you to Swaya and the panel of judges for all your time, dedication, and for this award. Thank you. I truly really appreciate it. As a sixth generation basket weaver, I grew up in a household smelling of sweet grass and ash, the materials we use to make our Wabanaki baskets. Some of my earliest memories are of my mother sitting in her workshop for hours, weaving baskets for upcoming shows and events. For anyone else who has grown up in a household of scents and sights, that represent your heritage and traditions, you know it's something that permeates your life. My basket, embers, started off as an ash tree in the Maine woods. It was the first ash tree I ever harvested, and I'll never forget it. I was with Jeremy, and he had just cut down a separate eight-foot tree with a chainsaw. So the tree was lying flat down on the ground on two supports, so it was, it was lifted up. Um, and I've never harvested before. Um, we have people from our tribe who harvest for the weavers. Uh, not everyone harvests and then processes it and then weaves it. Um, so I didn't know what to expect. Um, I kind of just thought baskets you know, fell out of trees at that point. <laughs> um, <laughs> and um, then to my hor literal horror, he began smacking every inch of that tree um, from the bottom to the top of the back of an axe to loosen up the growth rates. And uh, after taking a few minutes to soak in what was expected of me and to observe what Jeremy was doing, I began pounding away at my own tree. And uh, five hours later, I could barely lift my own arms. And I thought we were done for the day, <laughs> only to realize we were just getting started. Um, Jeremy informed me that I still had to pull all the growth rings off the tree with my hands, split all the ash um, using a splitter that we made, um, store and store all the ash after it dried, and gauge anything I wanted to use on my upcoming basket. This was only the beginning, and as Jeremy put it, we were not out of the woods yet. From the hours in the woods, harvesting and pounding the tree, to the hours spent scraping each piece of gauged ash, to get it to the right thickness, 
to the decision of what colors to dye the ash, to the hours contemplating of what shape and size of the basket would be, and the dozens of hours spent weaving, uh, Embers was created. My basket represents more than the hours of work that goes into creating something physically, though. It represents more than the fire we all start off with when thinking about a new idea that excites us in creating. It signifies the slow burning fire that all of us have deep down. After the most challenging year of my life, uh, no matter how low the fire got inside of me, there was still always something burning. Uh, the ember was still there in me. And uh, thank you all again for this great honor. I'll give it a little bit. Congratulate all of the award winners, and uh, you know that's quite a, an accomplishment. Uh, I also want to thank uh, Jamie and uh, all of her staff and uh, the board directors for uh, SWIA and uh, the volunteers. You uh, provide so many opportunities for indigenous artists, and many of whom are uh, IAIA alums and current students. And so we really appreciate what you do for our community and the Institute of American Indian Arts. So thank you very much, Jamie. Uh, we selected a piece of uh, sculpture uh, for the IAIA uh, award for, in, for the 2024 uh, uh, SWAYA award. And uh, it's going to go to the sculpture piece in Matriarch. And it was uh, submitted by one of our alums, Adrian Wall. And if he could come on up to the stage. Uh, Adrian is a, sculpt a sculptor from Jemez Pueblo. New Mexico. He received his BFA from the Institute of American Indian Arts in 2014, and he has been sculpting since the, his late teens and has always had an affinity towards stone cult uh, sculpture. Uh, but his, although his primary medium is stone, he works with many materials, including clay, bronze, and glass. He has won major awards. He's won uh, uh, different uh, fellowships and National Museum of American Indian and others. Uh, he also was a artist in residence for the Institute of American Indian Arts. Um, he's so talented, in fact, he's a musician, and many of you have heard his uh, band in the state. And, uh, and the, other, the other night at a gala, uh, he put together a, another band called uh, the Thunderbirds and played for us. It was, it was great. Uh, but it's a pleasure to present uh, this award to Adrian. Uh, we really appreciate all of his support. He's a great ambassador for the college, and uh, his whole family is. So thank you very much, Adrian. And congratulations. Speech, speech, speech. How's everybody doing? Um, welcome to the Santa Fe Indian Market. We're exciting times here. Uh, my, uh, my name's Adrian Wall. That was a really nice thing. I'd have to even introduce myself right now, but I grew up around this market. My parents showed here as a kid, one of those kids underneath the booth and that kind of thing. Um, and like Ryan, I, I started pretty young carving. I was inspired by Clifford Frawa. And um, my work is really about, or really um, a product of kind of the market that was built around Santa Fe and the stone carvers that came in the 60s and 70s. Um, and, you know, I, I'm kind of really an emulation of those guys. And that's, in fact, that's how I learned to carve, because I really copied him, you know, when I first started. But um, over the years, I've been carving for a long time, and I'm really glad I went to IIA, or else I wouldn't have gotten a ribbon at all this time around. <laughs> but um, I graduated in 2013, and um, 
for the last few years, I've been really experimenting with other materials, and I've um, lately found a love again for stone. Um, but I guess lately I've been carving a lot of granite, and um, I think that's going to be the, my path for the future of, of what I'm carving. Um, the piece I carved, unfortunately, there's no picture of it, but if you walk around the corner, you can see it. See it. It's called the Matriarch. And basically, I like combining figurative form with um, abstractions. And um, this piece is really inspired by, by my partner over there and um, all the women in my life. I have very powerful women in my life. But my, you guys know my sister Kathleen Wall and my mother Fanny. Um, they're they're well-known artists as well as Chandine's family. They're very um, grounding um, in their spirituality and their um, nurturing. Um, we have a couple of young daughters, three young daughters, and they are... Um, um, you know, very influenced by, by, them, by their mothers, and as well as me. And I think about them a lot when, when I, and then do every decision I make um, as an individual. So um, that's what that piece is really about. Um, check it out. It's got some really cool designs and effects. I wish we did have a picture for you, but if you don't mind, just walk over there and see it. Again, thank you so much. Um, have a great market, everyone, and thanks for everything. Thank you so much, Jamie, to your, you and your team. Uh, it's going to be another great year at market. I can feel it already. Um, nowhere in the world is small or miniature art as appreciated than here at Santa Fe Indian Market. We've seen baskets as big as thimbles, beadwork that can fit in the palm of your hand, and jewelry so fine and intricate uh, you need a magnifying glass to see the detail. For our award, we look at all of the art, big and small, but this year we chose a smaller work that stood out as an exceptional example uh, from its classification. This year, the Native American Art Award of Excellence goes to Marlon Little Thunder. Yeah. Marlon might not be here. The piece is over here against the wall. It's, uh, it's facing this way, but it's on this wall. Take a look at it. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. And now for the big moment. And before we get there, I just want to say again, you've heard many stories, you've heard experiences, you've heard perspectives. Swai is honored to be able to be an elevated platform for these artists in the world. And as the executive director, I feel very, very privileged to not only get to know these artists, but also to call them family and friends. So without ado, I want to also say thank you, Duran and Bob Balzer, for your continued support. And also, Dr. Martin from the Institute of American Indian Arts. I am an alumni. I love that school. I see the direct um, line to any type of industry that you could use. You can't find a better education. Um, but here we go. Is everybody ready? OK. I'd like to welcome Brian Milo to stand for the Best of Show of Indian Market 2024. Dan Milo. Sorry, I called it Brian. Jokes. <laughs> you have the right to hold this ribbon. Yesterday, it was a, an honor to get called, be up for best classification. Everybody dreams, all of us have been here, dreams of, of this. We've been here mm -hmm. year after year, and we see that best to show, and it kind of drives us to, to do better. I hate to say it, but I think there's a couple of flaws in that, but <laughs> I'm a perfectionist. <laughs> I don't know what to say. Thank you, thank you so much. Thank you. My mom and dad are here. Thank you for being here for the inspiration. I want to thank you this to all the warriors from 1680 that helped us be where we're at now. Thank you. Thank you all so much for your patience with me as I mispronounce names or forget names, and I apologize. 
memorize, not memorable. But I'd like everyone to um, join us.